Hello and welcome to Battle Report number 17 for the channel. Today we have a Dwarfs versus the Herd Kings of War Battle Report. 1500 points. The scenario is kill. My dwarf list is the same as it has been for the last few battle reports. One horde of shield breakers with the brew of sharpness. One bulwarker regiment with the brew of courage, which I'm being less and less impressed by. Uh, Earth elemental horde, blessing of the gods. A troop of rangers. Greater Earth Elemental, Steel Behemoth, Army Standard Bearer times two, one with the Boomstick and one with the Healing Charm, and one Stone Priest with the Bane Chant upgrade and the Brew of Haste. For the Herd, this is a horde of Spirit Walkers with the Brew of Strength, a regiment of Tribal Longhorns with the Brew of Courage, a horde of Guardian Brutes with the Blessing of the Gods, a Beast Pack, a Stampede, a Brutox, one Shaman with the Bane Chant upgrade, one Shaman with the Bane Chant upgrade, and the Amulet of the Fireheart, which is the, uh, you can cast two spells in one turn once. So, um, <clears throat> before we start, this was a, a, a demo game that I set up. Uh, this person contacted me on Facebook, and I said, okay, let's do it. So, I provided both armies and lists. So, anyway, uh, from our visible right to left, that is the Tribal Longhorns. Next to them is the Guardian Brutes. Between then, there's a Lone Shaman hanging out, a horde of Spirit Walkers. And on the other side, there are the Beast Pack, uh, the other Shaman, the Stampede, and the Brutox. On my side, from left to right, we have the Bulwarker Regiment, the Boomstick Operator, a horde of shield breakers, the troop of rangers, and then we have our earth elemental horde, uh, earth greater earth elemental, the um, being uh, the uh, stone priest behind him, and then we have the tank with the uh, heal bot behind him. So uh, this table kind of threw me for a little loop, and I, I felt really outnumbered. So you can see there's a big piece of terrain in the middle. Um, is a better picture of that. Uh, big piece of terrain in the middle, so I thought, well, I'll try to divide my forces into somewhat logical groups. Not really sure how to handle anything across from me, and yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see that. So uh, this is essentially the end of Dwarf's turn one movement. Well, not quite. That's just a start. Okay, so shooting, uh, boomstick shot, nothing special, uh, and you can see there's just a little movement, just uh, redressing my lines a little bit. The uh, herd turn one, the uh, side here moves up uh, quite aggressively, um, swinging the Brutox way around. Uh, the middle moves up, and the, sorry about the blurry picture, and the right moves up. So, it's the end of the herd turn one, nothing too special. I think there might have been a healing I missed just to take that point of damage off, but not terribly important. We go into turn two. Uh, turn two dwarfs, uh, just continually... Uh, straightening and angling my lines, knowing I'm going to have to take the charge, so nothing you can do about that. Um, I had forgot the uh, Stampede there has the Strider special rule, so I was like, well, this is good. At least he's going to have to climb the fence. Yeah, that doesn't help. Uh, on the other side, again, just the uh, bowl worker shifting over a little bit. Um, you know, standard stuff. Uh, shooting, a little bit better shooting on the Spirit Walkers here. Doing pretty okay. They are defense three, so they're pretty easy to shoot. Uh, and then an overview. So, herd turns to starts, and a double charge into my earth elementals happens. Uh, pretty standard. And then on the other side, um, the herd's just moving in. Um, like I advise, you know, I advise them. You should probably try to get a charge all at once. Don't don't come at me piecemeal. Um, but this guy actually, yeah, did a really good job for his first game of Kings of War. He's a 40k player, so it, it kind of showed. But uh, just an overview, uh, a little bit of healing into the Spirit Walkers here. A Bane Chant onto the uh, the uh, Stampede, uh, which is just horrible for me. The uh, Stampede is like 30 attacks, like Crushing Strength 1, Thunderous Charge 3, something like that. So something yeah okay this is where we took it back i was like oh yeah by the way don't bane chant them because they don't benefit from it bane chant the dogs 
it didn't help the dogs but then the herd or the stampede went and did an exorbitant amount of damage um and routed my earth elementals of course and ended up like that so um yep you see how that looks um pretty pretty brutal turn turn three see if the dwarves can pull something out um, on this side, we do a double charge into the stampede. The uh, rangers charge the front of the dogs. And over here, we're still just hanging back. Um, no reason to venture out. Uh, we do our throw of the dog. Doesn't accomplish much. Um, going to combat. Um, again, we, we, we hit these dogs, but we don't do anything enough. And then... And in the end, we really, really whiff on this stampede. Like, the combined of all, both my Greater Earth Elemental and Tank only end up doing like six damage. It was just abysmal. So, that's what it looks like after Dwarves turn three. We move into Herd turn three. Um, the Brutox comes swinging around. The stampede countercharges the Greater Earth Elemental. The Longhorns go charging into the Bulwarkers. Um, a little bit of healing here on the uh, Spirit Walkers. Uh, just to add a little insult to injury. Uh, a Bane Chant on the Longhorns to help them smack up my Bulwarkers a little bit. Uh, over here, the healing a little bit into the uh, Stampede. So after combat, the Longhorns, they do okay. Um, the dogs went back into the ranger, went into the rangers and, and really accomplished very little. And the stampede really fluffed. Um, he had taken a damage, so obviously lost all of his thunderous charge. And that just, he, he accomplished basically nothing. Well, three damage, I guess. But anyway, so we go to turn four. Turn four dwarves, and I make a monumental mistake. So... You can see what I'm looking here. <clears throat> I decide that I see the Brutox and, and he's coming. And I'm like, okay, yeah, Brutox is coming, right? <clears throat> I got to do something about this. So uh, for, for some reason, it, it, it decided that I should turn my tank around to face the Brutox and then just charge my greater earth elemental back into the stampede. Now, there's, there's no way that that greater earth elemental is going to finish off that stampede. So, okay. But by, by turning the tank around, um, if I don't kill that stampede, I give my rear to the stampede. And in this context, you'll, yeah, we'll, you'll see it later, but uh, it, was a, it was an unwise move. So my tank isn't going to do anything this turn. And he's probably going to get rear charged next turn. So, not, not a good choice. Um, my rangers go back in. Uh, my bull workers counter charge the longhorns, and yeah, everyone's just putzing around. Otherwise, uh, for the shooting, we get a little bit of healing in. Um, I think I fail a bane chant somewhere. It wasn't important. Um, the uh, rangers route the dogs, reform like this. And the bull workers only do like three damage or something to these guys. Nothing, nothing too great. So that's what it looks like after that turn. So herd turn four. So my my opponent has played a lot of tabletop games. So he he saw this right away. Even he saw this before I saw this. So I turned my tank around to face the brutox, but there was no reason for the brutox had to charge the tank. He could just charge the rear of my greater earth elemental. Because why not, right? Ugh. <clears throat> so, and then the um, the uh, the uh, stampede there goes into the rear of the tank. So, I, I just got rear charged twice. When I probably shouldn't have been rear charged at all. If I had thought about it. I, if I would have sent the tank and the greater earth elemental back in. I probably, well, you know, I, I could have done something better this time. It would have been a good chance to finish them. And then reform to face the Brutox and take him in the front. But instead, I did something else. Um, on this side, the uh, Spirit Walkers come into my Shield Breakers. And that's fine. And, of course, the Longhorns go back into the 
bowl workers, which is, you know, that's fine too. Yeah, another mistake on this side. I should have told him not to main chant these guys. They already have Brew of Strength and Thunderous Charge 1. They didn't need it. But it didn't matter too much. Uh, a little healing on the Stampede over here. Not surprising. The uh, bowl workers end up getting routed. Uh, overruns very little. Or maybe just reformed. Um, the uh, shield breakers hold out. 13 damage, but they're they're hanging out. Um, yeah, the uh, Brutox comes in and and does a whole, whole lot of damage. I think he, I think he rolled a six for his dice six. It, it was a it was a monumental amount of swings. But my opponent rolled the dreaded double ones. So my screw up so far hasn't been as bad as it could have been. On the other hand, the tank does not survive. Um, it was actually pretty surprising. I mean, yeah, the Stampede had taken a point of damage, so he didn't have that, but he was rolling 90 dice in this case. Um, I've not seen anyone have to roll 90 dice for anything yet, but 90 dice and uh, hitting on fours, winning on fours. Yeah, it was a lot of dice, so it was kind of funny to watch, but Tank died. They, um, he ends up backing up dice three to uh, get out of the rear... Oh yeah, so the so the Rangers end up in his flank, not in his rear. So an overview after that, overview after that. Sorry, the uh, it's pretty thinning out on the Taurus side. Uh, so we're going to turn five. Uh, turn five doors, the Greater Earth Elemental, and the Rangers double charge. The uh, Stampede there. Um, the Shield Breakers counter charge. Their uh, Spirit Walkers there. Um, and Boomstick Operator just stands there in the way, like a jerk. Uh, healing. Healing onto the Greater Earth Elemental, because he doesn't have anybody else to heal of consequence, really. Although, in retrospect, I probably should have healed the Rangers. But, the combined effort of the Rangers and the Greater Earth Elemental route the Stampede. And they turn around like such. It's pretty good. Um, forgot to do a combat, so here it is. Um, the, uh, you know, yeah, the, the shield breakers do what shield breakers do. They're, they're quite the mincers. Um, threes to hit, twos to wound. They're, they're just going to waste those guys. And they do. Uh, and that's the outcome after that. So, um, we're kind of going to skip, well, the only movement of consequence, well, there's two things, but one, the, uh, guardian brutes go charging into my, uh, shield breakers you can see there. Um, the... Tribal Longhorns charge uh, my Boomstick Operator. A uh, little healing is done here on the uh, Tribal Longhorns. Mostly because nobody needs a Bane Chant to accomplish anything over there. Um, the Shaman charges the rear of my Rangers. And the Brutox charges into the uh, Greater Earth Elemental in the front. Uh, there's another picture of that, looks like, from my perspective. Um, the tribal longhorns, tribal longhorns only succeed in wavering the, uh, the boomstick man. Well, not surprisingly, the guardian brutes finish off their target quite readily and just move like this. Um, the shaman does one point of damage and succeeds in routing my, uh, inspired guys. Pretty lucky rolling dice. Um, the brutox comes in and does some damage. And lo and behold, the luckiest greater earth elemental in the world lives another turn. So, to what it looks like after that, uh, basically nothing on the board for me, for all intents and purposes. Uh, we go into turn six. My boomstick operator succeeds in his headstrong roll and decides to preserve his life and run around. Um... In this case, what I've done is I've pivoted or well, about faced my greater earth elemental to point him at the shaman. And then I've moved my uh, heal bot in front of the brutox so that I can do a surge. So I surge my greater earth elemental into the shaman, uh, essentially just trying to pick up a couple points at this at this stage. There's no way my greater earth elemental is going to kill that brutox, but he might kill a shaman. So. 
We do that, and he whiffs. Well, a little bit of a whiff. And everybody lifts. Dwarf's turn six. Herd turn six. Um, the shaman charges into my stone priest. Um, the brutox goes into my flagger. The brutox does two damage to my flagger and only wavers him, which is which is kind of funny. Um, it's just not that not nearly as useful against those individuals as he is against that greater earth elemental. Uh, so yeah, looks like that. Uh, her turn six is that, and we roll for four, five, or six, and we get a six or five. Uh, I, mean, I forgot to take a picture of dice, but turn seven, um, Gilbot fails his his strong roll. Earth elemental goes into shaman. Earth elemental fails to kill shaman. Yes. Um, well, this still says dwarf, but it should say herd seven, but it doesn't matter. Brutox goes in. Brutox kills. Um, the other two shaman had double charged the front. Uh, Brutox overran uh, into the back of the greater earth elemental. And their combined effort was easily going to do a damage. And they routed. And basically wiped me off the table. So, um, as a result, it's a it's a obvious win for the herd. Um, I would only took out his tribal warriors and his dogs and his stampede, which was hardly, hardly anything. Um, some thoughts, you know, yeah, watch, watch your rears. Um, this was a good, a good game for my learning experience. Um, it, it's something you don't always, always think of. I, I, I commonly play someone who is in a very static uh, very cohesive, like the, the the forces of nature opponent I play. He's always very. It's always much more like static groups that are that are easy to to oppose and align, as opposed to in this case where that brutox is is running around behind me. Um, so, uh, and then on the other thoughts, I if I looked at this again, I probably would have still somewhat divided my forces, but I would have really tried to overweight one side as opposed to trying to like half and half it. Um, I don't. I don't think either side was in a position to win against what they were facing. Like maybe the left side, if I hadn't, if I had, have, if I had have taken out that stampede appropriately, I might have been okay. I might have. It's. It's hard to say. Um, but it's another thought on this too. Um, I think these are okay armies for a demo. At least if I, if at least if I want to keep playing a demo on a six by four table. I think the size is okay. Um, I just all those items bring in a lot of extra rules that I have to explain. So I'm thinking maybe thousand points um, on a four by four table might be a little easier for people to think. I don't do a lot of demo games, but occasionally I'm asked, and so I I don't know. I think it came pretty good. Like th these armies aren't so complicated, especially not the herd. Uh, it's very straightforward to to run at. You don't have very many spells. You know, it's not like you have so many abilities. I mean, we never even had to show him what Regen did because I never once wounded that guy. Anyway, sorry, rambling. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I have one more battle report from that day, so I might get to that this week, and we'll catch you next time.